This is the International Soccer Preview and we are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to Series 16. We're looking at the groups of the 2023 Gold Cup. This is Group D, Canada, Guatemala, Cuba, and the team yet to be decided. Here we go. Hello, it's the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. It's Series 16. I'm Kevin. And I'm Connor. And today we are looking at Group D for the Gold Cup 2023 tournament. This group includes Canada, Guatemala, Cuba, and a team yet to be determined. Right, and we'll tell you those candidates shortly. Uh, we usually give some information about the media cast at this point, but we're going to post a separate media cast uh, outlining our past, present, and future series. So suffice to say that there are a couple uh, still active, the 2023 African Cup qualifying and the Euro 2024 qualifying series, both the long and short version there. And uh, they can be found at the... Um, uh, soccerfiles.captivate.fm or on YouTube. Uh, the address is on the video here and in the show notes. And um, that's all I have to say about that. Let's keep on going with this one, Connor. Yeah, so this series features a deep dive into the history of the regional tournament for each of the teams, and we'll cover our usual information. Yeah, we'll look at the three sections that we're going to cover in this podcast. Uh, part one, we're going to introduce the teams in the group. And uh, part two, we'll do an overview of each team's history in the World Cup and in the Regional Cup. Yeah, and as we mentioned, this series uh, features a deep dive into each team's history in the Regional Cup. Yeah, in the Regional Cup finals. And uh, part three will be a comparison of the teams in, in their ranking, head-to-head -head records and odds. And um, we're going to end with a discussion of the prospects and our predictions. Yeah, um, well, this is as good a time as any to say that we're doing this media cast before the final playoffs, uh, meaning the fourth team uh, has not yet been decided. Yeah, uh, those teams will be decided just four days before the tournament begins. Uh, that wouldn't give us enough time to produce the series. So uh, you're also on the road for this one, hey, Connor? That's right, yeah. Yeah. Okay, well, we've decided uh, to give a short overview of those four candidates uh, where we would normally discuss group, uh, uh, where we would normally discuss the fourth team. Who are the four candidates, Connor? Yeah, so we have, it'll be a playoff, but it's between Guadeloupe, Guiana, Grenada, and then Antigua and Barbuda. Yeah, and uh, that's actually probably the most interesting playoff series, uh, which we'll get to. Um, and the spot, uh, yeah, so we won't be covering the history, just a, a really short introduction to those teams. Yeah, all right, well, let's jump into it. All right, well, let's go with the uh, introductions of each country. So first we have Canada. Canada, known as the Canucks or the Reds. Uh, Canada is a country of 39 million people. Um, and for those of you that aren't familiar, it's a large country that occupies most of the northern half of the continent of North America. That's right. And actually, Connor, uh, I don't know about you. I'm wearing a Canada shirt in all four of these podcasts so as to show no bias. Ah, of course. Yeah, well, me as well. Um, Canada, of course, also the country we call home. That's right. Our second team is Guatemala. Yeah, their nickname is Los Chapines. Um, which is a nickname for people from Guatemala. Um, Guatemala has a population of uh, 18 million people. It's actually the fourth largest or fourth most populous country in North America behind the US, Mexico, and Canada. So uh -huh. it's the largest in Central America. Um, and it sits directly southwest of Mexico, uh, also sharing a border with Belize, Honduras, and El Salvador. All right. Um, well, they don't seem the the... Uh, strongest team in South America, so that's pretty, or in Central America, so that's pretty interesting. We'll look into their history. Uh, third team, though, is Cuba. Cuba, yeah, known as La Tricolor for their red, blue, and white. Uh, Cuba is an island country of 11 million people, and it's actually the largest island in the Caribbean, um, and it sits south of Florida and just east of Mexico. All right, and then uh, the fourth team, well, uh, we don't know who it is yet, but we're going to introduce it 
uh, when we get to the history of the fourth team. So let's move on just to a kind of an overview of the number you gave us, numbers you gave us there. Yeah, so the largest country is Canada of 39 million people. Um, second is Guatemala. Um, like you said, not the strongest cent uh, Central American soccer team, but the largest Central American team in population, 18 million. And then Cuba has 11 million. Um, so actually all relatively big countries. Yeah, yeah, uh, not that much, uh, not that much smaller than uh, Canada or Guatemala and Cuba. Okay, well, Connor will be back uh, a little later in the show for part three. Um, I'm going to cover the history section myself. That's part two, and we begin with Canada. And uh, Canada's first international game was in 1924. And they are one of the oldest teams in the region, having first entered the World Cup in 1958. But they didn't enter in 1962 or 66. Uh, but they did participate every time since 1970. They joined the CONCACAF regional competition long after its 1963 inception, waiting until 1973 and they have participated consistently since then, except for 1998 when they withdrew. In terms of achievement, they've reached the World Cup twice in 1986 and recently, and they have yet to earn a point in the tournament. At the regional level, their highlights are winning the Regional Cup in 1985 in a period of strength, and uh, the Gold Cup in 2000, uh, the only team other than USA and Mexico to have won in the Gold Cup era. Let's move on to uh, a bit of a closer look at the uh, World Cup, but still an overview. So historically, Canada does well to reach the final round of qualification in their region. From 1978 to 1998, they did so regularly. In that period, they reached the World Cup in 1986, although they lost all games once there and didn't even score a goal. Their next closest qualification was in 1994, where they reached a, uh, I guess, a quarter intercontinental quarterfinal playoff. Uh, they lost to Australia there and would have had to beat Argentina beyond that, so were never a serious threat uh, for reaching the 1994 uh, World Cup. Still, it was a strong qualification one run within the region. Well, um, okay. <laughs> kind of me messing up my W's and my R's there. I don't know why. From 1998, they didn't reach the final round of qualification until recent times uh, where a, a much stronger team emerged, offering great hope for the future. We will get to that when we look at their most recent campaign in the World Cup. But uh, we'll move on to the next section, a regional cup overview. So as mentioned, Canada joined the regional competition late in 1973, fully 10 years after it started. Uh, 10 years after that, however, they won the title in the first of their three good periods. And that CONCACAF championship title win in 1985 uh, is what qualified them for the World Cup the following year. Uh, but they went into a flat period immediately after and rose again 10 years after the competition changed to the Gold Cup with an unexpected title in the year 2000, again becoming the only team other than the USA or Mexico to win the Gold Cup. And they had a good tournament the year after that uh, and in 2007, but only their recent times can be marked as a third period of strength, even if it comes only with a semi-final appearance rather than another Gold Cup win. So uh, we'll see in more detail because the next section deals with the Regional Cup deep dive. So as mentioned, the uh, first qualification for the Regional Cup was in 1973, and actually that was the year that... Uh, um, the Cup became a qualifier for the World Cup, so that was uh, possibly the motivator for them joining at that point. And in 1973, uh, despite uh, impressively besting Mexico, they themselves were bested by the USA, which was not a strong team at that point, and Mexico was the only team to advance from the group, so they didn't qualify uh, that year. And um, it would be the same qualifying group over the next two Cups, 
Uh, but from 1977, the top two teams advanced, and it was Mexico and Canada in both cases. Now, this deep dive is actually into the final, so we don't really uh, have that information on our screen. Uh, we'll just focus on the finals, and that's where we'll go here. Um, in both cups, Canada came fourth of sixth in the round of robin tournaments. Uh, there and then in 1985 they reached the cup also and uh, in that year there was kind of a group stage and a final stage so they came first in the group stage over Guatemala and Haiti and um, in the three team round robin kind of the final stage they won over Honduras and Costa Rica to take the title uh, which also qualified them for the 1986 World Cup hosted by Mexico now, Mexico wasn't involved in the tournament because they had uh, they were already uh, qualified by being hosts. So kind of opening the door for one of the smaller teams in the region there. Uh, 1989 was a poor follow-up as they failed to qualify. And in 1991, the competition changed to the Gold Cup. Uh, the USA and Mexico and Canada were granted automatic qualification to the Gold Cup, while Caribbean and Central American teams had to qualify through more local tournaments, uh, which seemed uh, decidedly unfair, especially uh, when Canada proved to be weaker than the, than the best teams in those sub-regions, especially uh, weaker than the Central American uh, teams or the best Central American teams. So uh, those teams prevented them from passing the group stage of the first three cups. And Brazil's under 23 team uh, proved far stronger than them in the 1996 Gold Cup. In 1998, Canada inexplicably withdrew, offering up the unconvincing re reason that they were given Jamaica the benefit of experience as they prepared for their World Cup appearance. So a bit of an odd story there. Uh, but the break seemed to do Canada good as they came back to win the 2000 Gold Cup. Uh, two ties in the group stage uh, narrowly saw them through to the quarterfinal, but there they beat Mexico in extra time. They then beat Trinidad and Tobago to reach the final with Colombia, uh, invited guest Colombia, uh, who had knocked out the USA. Uh, Canada won 2-0 over Colombia to earn their second regional title. And uh, they reached the semi-final in the following cup in uh, 2002. Uh, losing there on penalties to the USA and finishing third with a win over fourth place South Korea. Uh, they fell at the group stage in the next two editions. Uh, but then they reached the semi-finals once again in 2007. And uh, once again, they were knocked out by the USA. 2009 was a quarterfinal exit at the hands of Honduras. And uh, it was three group stage finishes in a row from 2011 to 2015. In uh, 2007, they reached the quarterfinals once again, and they went out to Jamaica there. But they did look a stronger team with the services of 16-year-old star Alfonso Davies. By 2019, they were increasingly becoming a regional power, uh, showing this in the new qualification system through the CONCACAF Nations League. They comfortably finished second in the group stage behind Mexico and looked commanding in the first half of the quarterfinal against Haiti, taking a 2-0 lead into halftime. However, they lapsed poorly in the second half, where Haiti engineered an impressive comeback to win 3-2. Uh, the profound disappointment at this indicates the higher ambitions that Canada have uh, with this much improved squad. So, of course, they took this squad into the 2021 Gold Cup. And because that's their most recent tournament, we will uh, look at it in a little bit more detail here. So, uh, qualification was through the CONCACAF Nations League. Um, Canada uh, won their first three games there. Uh, they were in a group of three with Cuba and and uh, USA. So actually, they uh, beat Cuba in the first two games and won at home uh, over the USA, um, but then lost to them 4-1 uh, away. So um, finished second in the group. 
uh, finished second in the group to, uh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead there, to qualify for the Gold Cup. In the group stage of the Gold Cup, they had no problem with Martinique and Haiti, beating them both 4-1, but once again lost to the USA, although um, really they they were the dominant team in the game. The USA scored just one minute into the game, and uh, you know Canada was unable to make up that ground. So they finished second in the group stage. That paired them with uh, Costa Rica in the quarterfinal, which they won. But then in the semifinal, they went out um, on a, a late injury time goal to Mexico, uh, losing 2-1 there. So a good performance by Canada. Um, uh, you know, kind of going toe-to-toe -to -toe with USA and Mexico in terms of uh, performance, but in terms of result, uh, losing to both of them. And that brings us to the World Cup in 2022, their most recent uh, um, World Cup campaign. And um, f uh, five teams were given automatic um, entry into the final round, which was very unfair. Uh, and Canada and uh, I think it was Panama and El Salvador kind of had to fight their way into the final round. Uh, because of COVID, it was kind of restructured. Uh, and the restructuring saw Canada in round one of three uh, having no problem actually um, uh, building up their scoring record uh, against Bermuda, Cayman Islands, and uh, Aruba and Suriname, uh, playing each of them once. It was an 11 nothing win over uh, Cayman Islands and the smallest margin a victory was 4 nothing over Suriname, so no problem for them there. In round two of three, it was a playoff to reach the final round, and they did well, beating Haiti twice there, and uh, went into the final round uh, with much promise. And they did fabulously, uh, going undefeated until the third last game. So, um, of course, the biggest opponents were Mexico, who they tied away and beat at home and USA, who they also uh, tied away and uh, beat at home uh, to finish first in the group. So um, a bit of a weak ending there with losses, uh, their only losses in Costa Rica and Panama. But by that time, they had pretty much secured uh, first place in the group. So an excellent finish uh, over Mexico in second and USA in third to uh, bring them to the World Cup. And in the World Cup, it was um, uh, unfortunately three losses. Uh, they played well against Belgium, actually dominated the game. But uh, the game was decided on a single goal by Belgium. And then it was a loss to Croatia. Uh, and then a more competitive loss to Morocco. Both of those teams reaching the semifinals, Croatia and Morocco. So in retrospect, a bit of an unlucky grouping uh, with teams that ended up doing very well in the Cup. And uh, a better performance than result. Uh, the result disappointing, uh, three losses. All right, and then the last thing we will look at in terms of games is the 2022-23 UEFA Nations League. So that was the uh, qualifier for this tournament. And they were in a group of three with Honduras and Curacao. And... Um, uh, uh, oh, the graphic on YouTube doesn't include... Courage out, so I'll just replace it there. Uh, in that one, they lost in Honduras, uh, the road game in Honduras, but otherwise won all of their games, uh, both over Curacao and finally beating uh, Honduras 4-1 uh, in Toronto to uh, take first place in the group and earn automatic qualification um, and actually move on to the uh, Nations League finals, which will be played in the middle of June. Uh, a kind of a warm-up, uh, a good warm-up before the World Cup there. So um, that's what got them to the tournament. And we'll finish the history section with a look at their uh, players. So uh, we have done a podcast uh, on Canada's players, both for the final round of World uh, Cup qualifying last September 
uh, which we updated, I think, um, or oh, not last September, in September 2021. And then we updated that around Christmas time. And because they reached the World Cup, we also did a players podcast. And we will do one here too. So this is just an overview. Uh, and Canada squad is largely unchanged. Even 40-year-old captain Atiba Hutchinson continues to play after the World Cup. Um, He'll definitely play in the Nations League final games, but I'm not sure he'll play uh, in the Gold Cup. Uh, beyond uh, Atiba Hutchinson is 36-year-old defender Stephen Vittoria, 35-year-old goalkeeper Milan Borjan, and 33-year-old midfielder Junior Hoylet. And those are the only ones really approaching retirement, and uh, they will last through the summer uh, at least. Uh, their biggest players, those that have made them a force in CONCACAF, are still in their early 20s. These are, of course, um, uh, Alfonso Davies and uh, Jonathan David and Tejon Buchanan. And I, I could keep going. There's a number of good players. Those are probably the three main ones. Uh, they haven't... Oh, and there's Stephen Estacchio, of course. Uh, they haven't added much, preferring to rely on the teamsmanship, which they call the brotherhood, uh, that uh, they've currently built in the squad. But um, a couple of new candidates, 23-year-old goalkeeper Tom McGill is with Brighton in England and may prove a replacement for uh, Milan Borjan down the road. And a couple of new faces, uh, though none of them under 22 and none of them with really impressive clubs uh, have been added. But I think they're fine to kind of carry on uh, with that uh, strong and well-united squad, at least through this uh, Gold Cup. Okay, we move on to our next team, which is Guatemala. And we begin with an overview of their participation and achievements. I'm just going to take a sip of water before I launch into that. All right, sorry about that. Guatemala's first international game was in 1921. So uh, like Canada, they first entered the World Cup in uh, 1958. And apart from 1966, they have participated consistently. They were there at the start of the CONCACAF regional competition in 1963. And... Um, they didn't enter the 1993 edition and a suspension in 2016 saw them missing the 2017 and 2019 gold cups although they did complete qualification for the 2018 uh, world cup so have never missed an edition uh, of that since uh, 1966. in terms of achievement guatemala have never reached the world cup uh, they reached the final round of qualification four times in 1974 and 78, then in 1994, and finally in 2006. In every case, though, they finished second from the bottom in a group of five or six teams. Uh, a little better in the regional cup. They won it in 1967, and that was a strong period surrounded on each side by second-place finishes. And since then, they have passed the group stage uh, four times and also failed to qualify four times, although that doesn't include their suspensions. We'll take a, a bit of a closer look at the World Cup. Uh, Guatemala, as mentioned, first entered in 1958, and after two campaigns, their entry was not accepted by FIFA uh, in 1996. I've tried to look into that, but uh, uh, can't find any real explanation. Uh, that was unfortunate because it proved their strongest period in the regional play, uh, but it took until 1970 to win their first game in World Cup qualifying. However, they grew in strength, the knocking out El Salvador in 1974, uh, El Salvador having qualified for the previous World Cup, and that period proved their strongest period in this competition, reaching the final round twice in a row, although in that round they finish uh, fifth of six both times. And they would reach the final round uh, twice more, and that was in 1990. Um, I think I said 1994 uh, in the participation and achievement section, but it was actually in 1990. Uh, they finished fourth of five there and 2006, where they uh, also finished second last, uh, fifth of six. Otherwise, they uh, have 
mostly fallen out in the semi-final round um, and failed to reach the final round. Okay, let's take a look at their regional cup overview. And Guatemala actually started as a regional power. They finished top two in three of the first four cups and won the title, as mentioned, in 1967. But they fell off precipitously after that uh, until earning fourth place in the last CONCACAF championship in 1989. Uh, in the Gold Cup era, they reached the cup with great consistency until 2007, but only twice did they pass the group stage. Uh, one of those times was a quarterfinal finish in 2007, but after 2007, they reached the cup only about half of the time. Uh, it was the quarterfinal again in 2011, but then um, they were suspended for two cups in a row from uh, in 2017 and 2019. And we're going to uh, see that a bit more up close in the deep dive section, which uh, is a deep dive into their regional cup finals history. And that begins in 1963 with the very first CONCACAF championship. Um, they didn't have to qualify for that cup. Um, they've, uh, and they uh, reached the groups or the, the, they were in the group stage and finished third of five in that group stage, which was comprised uh, solely of Central American teams. Uh, there was a qualification in 1965, but they received an automatic berth as hosts and they finished second in the round, top, round robin tournament, losing their last game to uh, the winners, Mexico. Uh, however, they beat Mexico in the 1967 edition, uh, suffering only a tie uh, with tournament host Honduras there, and they won their first and only title. They remained strong in 1969, coming second again behind host Costa Rica, uh, again beating Mexico there and actually helping to condemn Mexico to a fourth place finish uh, in that cup. Uh, however, that would put an end to uh, Guatemala's strongest period. And ironically, um, during that strong, strong period, they had failed to win a World Cup qualification game. Um, anyway, uh, the 1971 edition, they did not uh, even qualify there. Uh, but they did qualify in 1973 and 77. Uh, finishing fifth of six in both of those uh, tournaments. Uh, but then 1981 was a non-qualification year. And 1985 was a bit odd, although this uh, this deep dive is not about qualifications. I, I want to mention it because it's weird. They were oddly the only one of 17 teams to receive a bye into the tournament. So I tried to look into why that is, but was not able to figure it out. Um, anyway, they were in the tournament. And this one was a bit of an odd tournament in terms of structure, too. Uh, there was a group phase, and then the final round robin, uh, normally six teams, was just three teams. So uh, in the group phase, they were knocked out by Canada. They came second behind Canada, who eventually won uh, the tournament. Uh, however, they did beat Canada in qualification in the following tournament in 1989 to reach the finals, and there they finished fourth of five. Uh, 1991 saw the regional tournament become the Gold Cup, and qualification was earned through a local Central American tournament called the UNCAF Nations Cup. Uh, about the top three to five finishers there, depending on the year, uh, qualified for the Gold Cup. And Guatemala did so unfailingly until 2009, with the single exception of 1993, where they didn't enter. Um, yes, and they fell at the group stage in the first edition in 1991. But uh, after returning from their non-entry in 1996, they finished uh, fourth in the tournament. Now, that looks like a really good result, but when you take a close look at it, uh, that result came on the strength of a single win over St. Benson and the Grenadines. So a good result, uh, not really earned with a good performance, but uh, there we have it. Uh, though they consistently reached the tournament, they did not win another game over the next five tournaments. Um, 
uh, and they fell at the group stage every time. I'm just trying to keep up with my uh, graphics here. So it took until 2007 um, uh, where a win over El Salvador and a tie with Trinidad and Tobago saw them through to the quarterfinals uh, and there they lost 3-0 uh, to Canada. And it was very mixed after that, reaching the quarterfinals again in 2011, but then failing to qualify in the in the two years surrounding that in 2009 and 2013. Uh, 2015 saw them knocked out at the group stage. Um, and in 2017, they suffered a suspension for alleged corruption and refusal to follow the guidelines of uh, FIFA. So that, uh, that was at the uh, FIFA level rather than the CONCACAF level. Uh, the suspension carried on until May 2018, costing them participation in the 2017 and 29, uh, 2019 Gold Cups. Uh, the latter also entailed placement games for the new qualification system. That was the, the new CONCACAF Nations League. And so when they entered that for the 2019-2020 season, they came in at the lowest level in League C. And that actually led to a dramatic path to the 2021 Gold Cup, which we will take a look at in detail because that's their most recent tournament. So again, it begins in uh, CONCACAF Nations League C. And of course, they were far too strong for that league. So uh, easily won their games over Puerto Rico and Anguilla uh, to finish first in the group. And that qualified them for uh, the playoff round. So in the first of two playoff rounds, they uh, beat uh, they beat Guyana for nothing, and uh, in the second round, a really dramatic uh, game with Guadeloupe, uh, where they finished tied one one, and then went to a penalty shootout, which went far beyond the usual five penalties for each team. Uh, in the end, Guadeloupe won ten nine, and Guatemala was out of the cup. However, um, uh, Curacao was unable to um, take up their place in the Gold Cup there um, because of COVID problems. So Guatemala was uh, allowed to um, uh, Guatemala was called back in to replace them, uh, and uh, were in a group with uh, El Salvador and Mexico and lost both of those games. Uh, and managed to draw with Trinidad and Tobago in the final game, but finished last. So pretty dramatic campaign for Guatemala, starting in Group C, uh, luckily reaching the Cup despite losing a playoff, and then uh, finishing last in the Cup. Okay, and we move on to their World Cup 2022 uh, qualifying campaign, because it's their most recent um, uh campaign in that cup and uh, there they were knocked out in round one of three by Curacao so uh, they managed to uh, oh, beat the, it was just one game among the five teams so they beat Cuba, British Virgin Islands and St. Vincent and the Grenadines uh, but they only managed a, a goalless draw with Curacao and both of them finished not only finished on 10 points each but finished with the same goal difference so uh, Curacao actually went through by dint of scoring one more goal. Um, so a bit unlucky there. Um, and finally, the 2022 uh, CONCACAF Nations League. So we saw that they were promoted from Group C. So we're looking at Group B here. And that actually started kind of badly with a loss uh, in French Guiana. And they didn't do well on the road. They also tied... Uh, Dominican Republic there, but they were very consistent, winning all games at home and eventually won the group uh, uh, two points ahead of French Guiana uh, in second place. So that brings them to the, uh, to the cup uh, with an automatic placement as the winner of Group B. All right, well, we're going to finish uh, the history by uh, a quick look at their players. So Guatemala has a few players with clubs abroad, but the majority play in their league 
which is strong enough to attract players from South American countries and from Mexico as well, uh, in addition to other Central American companies. So uh, countries, I should say. So uh, a good league there in Guatemala. Uh, their top exports uh, are defenders Gerardo Gordia, and he's with Juventude in Brazil. And uh, Antonio L uh, Lopez is with Club America in Mexico. Uh, they also have a few playing in the North American League. And uh, the squad age-wise is in their prime with the top players between 26 and 31 years old. So it is a little bit lacking in youth with only a small number of players 23 years old or younger. But uh, rejuvenation won't be uh, an imperative for them for a few years yet. Oh, and that brings us to the end of Guatemala, and we move on to our third team, Cuba, uh, beginning with an overview of their participation and achievements. So Cuba's uh, first international game was in 1930. Okay, uh, was in 1930, and uh, uh, they first entered World Cup qualification in 1934, so uh, one of the oldest teams in the region there. Uh, they entered three cups in a row from then until 1950. Uh, but participation after that was patchy until 1998, from which time they've entered consistently. Uh, the same is true of the Regional Cup, which stands to reason, since it was the qualifier for the World Cup from 1973 to 1989. Uh, they participated in only five of the 12 tournaments from 1963 to 1993, but their consistency improved after that. Uh, and they were absent from the tournament only in 2009 and 2021 uh, when they withdrew. So Cuba's main claim to fame is reaching the quarterfinal of the 1938 World Cup. Uh, it was less spectacular than the results suggest, but uh, it is nevertheless a shining mark on their record. Uh, that was the only cup they qualified for, but in 1934 they had reached a final playoff and came close again in 1950. But after that they only reached uh, the final round of qualification once. Their best result in regional competition also came early. That was a fourth place finish in 1971. Uh, it took until 1998 to even reach the cup again, uh, well into the Gold Cup era there. Okay, well, we have talked about their achievements in the World Cup, but let's take a closer look in an overview. Uh, so it was only four years after playing their first game as a national team that they entered the 1934 World Cup. Uh, they failed to qualify there, but automatically reached the 1938 edition when most teams in the Americas uh, withdrew from the tournament. In a 16-team knockout structure, they beat Romania, but then lost heavily to Sweden. In 1950, only USA, Mexico, and Cuba competed for the two spots allotted to the region. So Cuba was in the final round by default. Among those teams, though, they finished third, uh, missing a great opportunity to reach the cup once more. And then after that, their participation was inconsistent until 1998, although that period does contain the only World Cup where they reached the final round of qualification. Uh, that was in 1982, uh, by the way. Um, uh, and even there, fifth of six in the final round with only the top team advancing still left them far from the cup. Okay, and we're going to go immediately to the uh, deep dive for um, uh, Cuba. So uh, patchy participation meant that they only reached the two cups in the CONCACAF championship era from 1963 to 1989. And those two cups were in 1971, where they were mildly competitive. Um, Sorry, I've kind of lost my spot there. Uh, yes, mildly competitive in the round robin tournament with one win over Honduras, uh, ties with Haiti and Trinidad and Tobago, and losses to Mexico and Costa Rica there for a fourth place finish in the group. 
Uh, it took them then until 1981. They didn't enter in 1973 and didn't qualify in 77. Uh, 1981, though, reached the uh, final round robin again. And uh, the exact same record, actually. Uh, one win over Haiti, ties with Canada and El Salvador, and losses to Mexico and Honduras. And this time, that same record was only worth fifth of sixth place in the group. So it was well until um, into the Gold Cup era, era that they qualified again. 1985, they didn't enter. And the final CONCACAF championship in uh, 1989, they didn't qualify for. Uh, 1991 started the Gold Cup era and qualification came through the Caribbean Cup uh, for them. But in the first edition, uh, they withdrew uh, from the Caribbean Cup, and in, in 1993, they didn't enter. Um, in 1996, they didn't qualify, so that brings us to 1998, where they actually did reach the Cup. Um, in a tough group, actually, they lost 3 nothing to USA and 7-2 to Costa Rica, so it was a quick exit there. Uh, however, uh, after not qualifying in 2000, they began to qualify regularly and uh, they fell at the group stage uh, uh, for the first three cups uh, after, nine, after 2002, coming behind South Korea in 2002. Um, no, in 2003, actually, they did reach the quarterfinal um, where they lost to uh, USA 5 nothing after passing the group stage uh, behind Costa Rica but ahead of Canada, but knocked out by the USA there. Uh, in 2005, it was a fourth place finish in a very tough group with uh, USA, Costa Rica and Canada uh, finishing ahead of them. And uh, 2007 was also last place in the group, this time behind Honduras, Mexico and Panama. In 2009, they withdrew from the Caribbean Cup, uh, actually for reasons unknown. And after a miserable 2011, where they lost all group stage games by five goal margins, including to El Salvador, uh, they reached the quarterfinals of the Cups in the following two editions in 2013. Um, in 2015, again, uh, it was more impressive than it seems. They were, uh, they won only the last group stage game in both tournaments. That was over Belize in 2013 and Guatemala in 2015, and they finished third place in the group both times. But that was enough to advance, uh, and maybe they wish they hadn't because. Uh, they lost heavily in the quarterfinals in both cases. It was 6-1 to Panama uh, in 2013 and 6-0 to USA in 2015. So throughout this period, uh, their troubles off the field were compounding their performances. In 2015, for example, uh, visa problems prevented six Cuban players and the manager from entering the USA in time for the first match, which was ironically against the hosts uh, USA. Uh, every tournament uh, during this period also came with the risk of players defecting. And looking at 2015 again, it was, that was a particularly bad year with five players and one assistant manager fleeing the team. Uh, and this one included one of their top stars at the time, Ariel Martinez. Uh, so perhaps that weakened the team. Uh, well, of course, it has weakened the team over the years. Uh, but, you know, uh, directly in 2017, they failed to qualify. And in 2019, they looked pretty weak, finishing last in the group, uh, losing all three games and finishing with a goal record of 0 and 17 there. Uh, and in 2019, uh, three players defected and uh, one of their top players was scared to enter the USA for fear of immediate arrest, so didn't uh, didn't come to the tournament. So those are the kind of problems uh, that they've been having, and of course, uh, that's affecting their performance. Let's take a look at the 2021 Gold Cup, their me uh, most recent uh, uh, campaign. So uh, beyond being slightly out of their depth in League A, 
Uh, they were unluckily paired with two of the strongest teams in the region. The USA is always a top power, and the recently improved Canada made for an impossible task. And they lost three of the four games. Oh, sorry, they lost, yeah, three of the four games heavily. Uh, the only respectable result was a home loss to Canada, uh, just uh, one nothing there. Um, Further miss, so, so the, the third place finish in Group A qualified them for the playoff rounds, but further misfortune came when visa and COVID protocols uh, issues caused them to forfeit the playoff game. Uh, though I, I do question uh, that the game with French Guiana was staged in the USA, where we've seen uh, they already have a lot of visa problems getting into the country. So um, uh, a bit of a question mark surrounding that. Anyway, they didn't qualify for the 2021 Gold Cup. And we'll take a look at their 2022 World Cup. Um, they came in somewhat surprisingly as the pot four team uh, amongst relatively weak teams. So uh, understandably, they are behind Curacao and Guatemala. But um, St. Vincent and, and the Grenadines and British Virgin Islands. Uh, it's a bit of a surprise that uh, St. Vincent and the Grenadines was ranked above them. And they proved that wrong uh, by beating them and British Virgin Islands. But they lost to Guatemala and Curacao and finished third uh, in the round one of three uh, qualification for the World Cup 2022. So um, knocked out fairly quickly there. And finally, we look at the 2022-23 CONCACAF Nations League, as that was the qualifying tournament for this, uh, uh, or that was the qualification for this World Cup, uh, this 2023 Gold Cup. And uh, that started with a loss in Guadeloupe, but they uh, were able to make that up with consistency over Barbados and Antigua and Barbuda and actually beat Guadeloupe in the final game. So uh, ended up comfortably winning the group six points ahead of Guadeloupe and uh, the first place there earned them an automatic spot into the uh, Gold Cup. Okay, well, we'll finish this section with a look at their players. We've talked about it a bit. Uh, because of the troubles they've had with players defecting. Um, particularly, they've lost some of their best ones. Uh, currently, O'Neill uh, O'Neil Hernandez is their top player. He is with Norwich in the uh, English League, recently promoted back to England's Premier League. Uh, but it is indicative of the problem that they have, that the 30-year-old player, uh, O'Neill Hernandez, has played only eight games for Cuba. Otherwise, they have several players with clubs outside the country, mostly in Costa Rica and Guatemala, and with a couple in the USA. So I got to admit, I'm a bit confused about how their relationship works with the USA. I know some of the defected players have played for teams in the USA, but then some of the players living in country, um, or, you know, I mean, some of the players who haven't defected play for clubs in the USA. So one of these is uh, George Corrales, uh, or probably Jorge Corrales, who plays with FC Tulsa, and he's one of their most experienced players. Uh, those with under 30 caps or more um, are generally close to their 30s. Uh, other than that group of five players, most of them are under 25, with quite a few in their early 20s or teens. So that group includes 18-year-old Romario Torres, and he's with Nacional, a pretty good team in Uruguay. And uh, it looks like they will be stronger um, than the generation currently in their prime, but there is a threat that they may lose some of these players to defection. So um, again, you know, uh, reasonable talent coming out of Cuba, but um, uh, problems off the field. Uh, often preventing that from being expressed. All right, well, that brings us to the uh, end of Cuba, and we move on now to the fourth team, but uh, because we don't know who the fourth team is, uh, Connor is coming back in to, to talk about the candidates. So who do we have? Yeah, the first team we have is Guyana. They're currently ranked 159 in the ELO system. Uh, so Guyana is ranked highest among the four teams vying for a playoff spot. 
Although actually all teams are ranked within 16 points of each other. So very, wow. very close. Yeah. Uh, Guyana came to this playoffs having finished second in their League B grouping, uh, losing both games to group winner Haiti and tying Montserrat at home but beating Bermuda twice. Uh, they reached the Gold Cup in 2019, which was their only entry, and did so by finishing seventh in the CONCACAF League placement round, uh, far ahead of the next closest, uh, Antigua and Barbuda, um, in 18th place. Uh, in the Cup, uh, they lost to the USA and Panama, but tied Trinidad and Tobago to finish third in the group stage. They otherwise came close to reaching the Gold Cup in 1991 and 2017. Uh, the mid-2010s was a period of relative strength for them, which also gave them their best World Cup qualification showing, reaching the semi-final round of qualifying uh, for the only time in their history. 2022 World Cup qualifying was weak, though, finishing fourth of five in a group uh, including behind Puerto Rico. All right. Well, that is the first of them. And shortly or close behind is uh, Guadeloupe. Uh, they are ranked 165, so just six points behind Guyana. Yeah. And uh, Guadeloupe is not a country unto itself, but rather an overseas department or region of France. Uh, really, they can be likened to a province of France. And because Guadeloupe are not an independent country, they cannot be a member of FIFA so they don't compete in World Cup competition. They have participated in regional competition from 1991 with the start of the Gold Cup, and they had a strong period from 2007 to 2011, reaching three Gold Cups in a row and passing the group stage twice, reaching as far as the semi-finals in 2007. They otherwise reached the Cup one other time, that was in 2021, uh, so the most recent edition. There they lost all their games, even to Suriname, and were knocked out at the group stage. They come into this playoff having finished second in their League B group, exchanging home wins with group winner Cuba, but losing twice to Antigua and Barbuda, who tied them on points. Yes, that's right. And um, uh, the third team is uh, Antigua and Barbuda. And uh, actually, they were, uh, I think you're going to explain, uh, they weren't originally part of this playoff. Uh, I'm just one point behind Guadeloupe. Tell us about them. Yeah, 166 in ELO. Um, so Antigua and Barbuda finished third in their CONCACAF Nations League B campaign. Uh, there they lost to winners Cuba twice, um, but actually beat second place Guadeloupe twice. However, with second place uh, firmly in hand, they crashed devastatingly in the final game by losing at home to Barbados, who had lost all of their games to that point. So they finished tied on point with Guadalupe, but behind on goal difference. Um, normally, uh, you know, third in that group would not be enough to reach the playoff. Um, but the drama continued in mid-June when Nicaragua was disqualified from the Gold Cup for fielding an ineligible player. Uh, Trinidad and Tobago, who was in their, uh, their group, took the automatic qualification spot. And the playoff spot that Trinidad and Tobago were scheduled for was handed to the best third place finisher, which is Antigua. Um, so they faced Guadalupe in the first playoff round, uh, the team they beat twice in the Nations League. Uh, they've never reached a regional tournament and came close only once. That was in the year 2000. All right, so good drama going into this uh, playoff. Definitely, yeah. So they did not expect to be here. Yeah. And the fourth team is uh, just nine points behind that, and that's Granada. Yeah, 175th in ELO. Uh, Granada began qualifying for the World Cup in 1982, but have never reached a cup, nor even the final or semi-final round of qualification. In the regional cup, they reached the Gold Cup three times, including twice in a row in 2009 and 2011, and also in 2021, the cup having expanded to 16 teams uh, from 2019. However, they are beyond their depth uh, once in the cup. They were knocked out at the group stage all three times, in fact, um, and lost all their games over those three appearances. All right. Well, a little later. I'm anxious to do it now, actually, to talk about uh, what you think. But uh, we'll save that for the discussion, which is not far away here. Uh, but we are going to move on uh, to part three of the uh, of the podcast here, or of the media cast. And that begins with the uh, pots that they came from. Uh, oh, hang uh, yes, uh, let's uh, do that. Yeah. Um, so the seeded team here, 
um, Canada. They came from pot one. They were ranked fourth among CONCACAF teams. Um, Guatemala were eighth. Um, so they were from the bottom of pot two. Um, Cuba were 13th, so from so second bottom in pot three or third out of four. And then, of course, the playoff teams. Um, so what do you make of that? Uh, yeah, uh, well, I really don't think Canada is the uh, is weaker than Costa Rica. And, um, you know, it could be that Mexico and the United States send a B team. And in that case, uh, I think it's a great opportunity for Canada. Um, Guatemala, yeah, I, I agree that they, they're probably the weakest among those top two teams. And uh, Cuba is a bit of a dark horse for me. I think this is a really exciting group. Uh, but and, uh, did you, uh, uh, you have lured me into discussion, Connor. That was oh. not nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess commenting on pots, I would say that all these teams are really from the bottom of their pot. So I guess an argument could be made that it's not the strongest group on paper, but it's an interesting group, which we'll discuss. Yeah, it, it is a very interesting group. And uh, I think those playoff teams are not too far behind. So uh, they could make it more interesting yet. Uh, okay, we move on to the uh, uh, FIFA and uh, ELO rankings, and um, it looks like I have to post them as we go here. All right, well, I'll begin with Canada. Um, Canada, like we said, fourth in uh, con among CONCACAF teams coming into this tournament. Their FIFA ranking is 47th, and their ELO ranking is uh, 40th. Um, they actually reached a high of 40th in FIFA and 28th in ELO in December 2021. Um, but really, it's been a story of, of kind of a remarkable rise for Canada, um, culminating in, of course, a World Cup uh, birth in 2022, their first since 1986. Um, so Canada's come a long way. They were below 100 in the FIFA rankings in June 2015, but have kind of steadily increased their standing uh, with some uh, good performances in regional and World Cup qualifying play. Yeah, absolutely. We're very excited about uh, where Canada is at right now. Uh, where's Guatemala at as far as this goes? Yeah, so Guatemala is 116th in FIFA rankings um, and 83rd in ELO. Um, they are, of course, the pot two team here. Um, it's been pretty consistent for them. They've been a bit higher in both. They've been a bit lower in both uh, in recent years. Um, but they've been under uh, 100th in FIFA for the past seven seven years, really. Um, ELO, they've kind of been closer to that 80th mark. But um, kind of whatever way you look at it, there, there are many pl uh, places ranked below Canada. Um, kind of 70 places in the FIFA rankings. Um, 40 in the ELO, but it's it's a long way off the pot one team. Yeah, and uh, as I said at the top, I'm a bit surprised they're not like one of the top challenging Central American teams. I mean, in addition to being as big as they are, they also have one of the best leagues, I would say. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, it is a bit baffling that smaller teams like El Salvador have done much, much better than them. Yeah. All right, well, uh, the third team is uh, Cuba. Yeah, Cuba are 168th in FIFA and 122nd in ELO. Um, they have kind of hovered around that mark for a long time. A decade ago, they were stronger. They were um, 91st in FIFA and 101st in ELO. So they have been above 100 uh, in the FIFA rankings, um, but not for a long time. And actually, in the past decade, they've never been among uh, above 100 in ELO. So. Um, yeah, they're, they're among the CONCACAF teams. Um, pot three is kind of where they do better than the feeble teams, but usually a bit behind the Central American teams. Yeah, yeah, it's too bad. Uh, I think um, they're actually a better team than at least the FIFA ranking indicates here, but they're very uh, kind of uh, troubled. I mean, uh, a few times when they've come to the USA to play in tournaments, some of their better players have defected and Obviously, that, that would upset the balance of the team and yeah. stuff like that. It's too bad. I'll just pop in the uh, the rankings that we looked at for the candidates here, and we know that they're all within 16 points of each other, but perhaps can you can speak to uh, the comparison, especially with uh, Pot 3 Cuba there. Yeah, so we'll use the ELO rankings for these four teams, which we find to be more reliable. So Cuba's ELO ranking is 122nd. And then the four teams in the playoffs are all between 
159th and 175th. So certainly they're all below Cuba, um, but they're not terribly below, um, you know, kind of 30 or 40 places. So, um, yeah, I, I think um, give some of these teams a bit of a chance. Yeah, I, I think I lured you into discussion. That was my revenge for <laughs> Okay, well, let's uh, move on to, to the head-to-head -head records. And again, we just have the uh, we just have the um, uh, three teams here. Uh, we won't get into it with the uh, candidate playoffs. Uh, Canada and Guatemala. Uh, Canada has a winning record of five wins, one loss, and two uh, draws. Yeah, actually, five wins, one draw, and two losses, I believe. It's good, because you were supposed to say that part in the first place. <laughs> I'm all messed up here. Yeah. Um, any any recent or notable results? Uh, no, actually, the most recent uh, meeting was in the uh, 2007 Gold Cup quarterfinal, which Canada won 3 nothing. so they haven't really met uh, recently. Yeah. Canada against Cuba, they have an, uh, Canada has a winning record, nine wins, three draws. Um, and a single loss. Uh, yeah, and they actually have met uh, quite uh, a couple of times recently, and it's been bad for Cuba. Uh, Canada beat them 7 nothing in the group stage of the 2019 Gold Cup, and then uh, beat them 6 nothing in 2021 Gold Cup qualifying, although they just did, uh, beat them one nothing in the uh, in the second leg of that. Yeah, a bit of a dark omen for Cuba there. Um, and then our last matchup is Guatemala versus Cuba. This one's close, but Guatemala has the edge. Three wins, one draw, and two losses. Uh, yeah, and they've met recently too. They actually met in the 2015 uh, Gold Cup group stage, and Cuba won that one, won nothing, adding a bit of spice here. Uh, and in 2022 World Cup qualifying, um, uh, I, I just have the... Uh, I just have Guatemala... Uh, Guat, um, Guatemala winning one nothing in Guatemala, so I don't know if that was a, a, a home and away series or um, just a, a, a kind of a group with one game. Yeah, I think it might be that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, uh, interestingly tight there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we haven't been very successful in trying to find odds uh, for the tournament. Uh, we went through the pots. Uh, the only thing uh, I could find, at least so far, was the uh, odds to actually win the whole thing, which which is a bit of a blunt instrument, but uh, tell us what they say anyway. Yeah, Canada's given 5.5% chance uh, at winning the tournament. Uh, Guatemala and Cuba are both giving 1%, but I, I suspect those have been rounded up to 1%. Uh, yeah, uh, again, it's a bit of a blunt instrument and doesn't tell us much. I, I don't even think we can... Uh, really use it to start the discussion. So maybe we'll just uh, uh, go through the teams and uh, what uh, what chance do you give Canada of getting out of this group or of uh, uh, finishing this group? I get a bit of a leading question there. Well, I, I do think they're the odds-on favourites. Um, I, I see Canada getting out of this group almost certainly and, and actually almost certainly winning it. I think for Canada, we, we looked at the pots both Guada, Mala, and Cuba are kind of from the bottom of the pots. I think they could have could have been matched up against stronger teams than they got, you know, possibly Honduras instead of Cuba or Panama or Jamaica instead of Guatemala. So I think really it's a it's a relatively easy group for Canada that they sh they shouldn't have much trouble winning. Yeah, I agree. They've uh, they've been really um, easily managing teams like this in the uh, early stages of World Cup 2022 qualification and. Uh, um, uh, really no problem. We saw that they, they were thrashing Cuba. So I think even before uh, Canada came into a good period recently that they would they, they were uh, doing fairly well against teams like this anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I think the more interesting thing is kind of the battle for second. Um, Guatemala, you know, fate, you know, higher in the rankings, slightly better head-to-head -head record. But do you see them being a strong favorite for second place? Um, I'm a bit doubtful because I'm always uh, I, I always think Cuba can can put a strong foot forward uh, because they have the talent to do so. Um, but uh, again, it's kind of problems surrounding the team outside of uh, what's on the pitch. Uh, so I think if Cuba can kind of pull themselves 
uh, away from those problems, they could uh, provide Guatemala a challenge. Do you agree? I, I think so. And, and yeah, you're never quite sure what what state the Cuban team is going to arise, um, kind of arrive in, sadly. Um, I do probably give the edge to to Guatemala, but I, I don't think it's out of the question that Cuba can 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 beat them in the game or or find a way, whether through a draw or something else, to uh, to get out of this group. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think the gulf between second and third is very big here. And uh, I'm kind of curious to watch it. I think it's interesting. I think it gives Cuba a better chance than they would have had against some of the other teams we mentioned that they could have been drawn against. And, and yeah. possibly for any playoff winner, too. I think they'll view this as probably the best group to end up in. Yeah, well, we'll get to the uh, uh, playoff teams and... and um... I got to say, like, uh, uh, when we were preparing for this, uh, I, I was really surprised that Guatemala was the biggest country. Uh, you know, they seem to have a league in their league. Uh, 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 there are some Mexican players and South American players. People come to Guatemala to play soccer. And uh, I, in my mind, and I'm not sure you feel this way, but I'm, I'm much more familiar with Honduras and El Salvador and Panama I almost feel like I don't know uh, Guatemala. Why not? Where have they been? Yeah, no, it's it's a good question. Um, you know, they, they do qualify for this tournament sporadically and have probably a better history. Like, you know, we, we discussed kind of the early days or, or you went over the early days. You know, they were they were strong in the, in the early era. So I'm not really sure why they haven't managed to keep up with with kind of some some teams in Central America with smaller populations and and yeah, why they haven't really made much of an impression kind of at the World Cup stage or really in in um, in the Gold Cup recently. So, yeah, I'm not sure if we're waiting for them to emerge or, or not. Yeah, um, it's almost like uh, they and Costa Rica should be reversed in position. Yeah, in terms of uh, population size, for sure. I mean, you know, Costa Rica, a wealthier country. Um, in in Central America, but Guatemala, I don't think, is much worse than some of its its smaller neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I have a bit of a uh, just finishing up on what you said there. I have a bit of a soft spot for Cuba. Uh, you know, I always like teams to put their best foot forward, and and they haven't been able to do that. So uh, at least I would like to see them have a competitive tournament. Yeah, I think it would be good too. I. I, you know, kind of pull for them as a bit of an underdog and, you know, the challenges that that country has faced. Um, it would be good to have them something to cheer about. Um, Cuba probably, of course, more known for baseball than than soccer. But, yeah, um, yeah, it'd be nice to see them competitive for sure. All right. Well, do you see any of the uh, four teams? And we can almost treat them as one because they're so close to each other uh, in rankings. Do you see uh, whoever... Um, emerges from the playoff as challenging, uh, well, we'll say challenging Cuba? Um, possibly. I, I think Cuba is a bit of an unknown. They could be better than expected or they could be be much worse. So I think it's possible. Um, you know, against Guatemala, I see it less likely. I still favor Guatemala for second place. But um, you never know. Some of these small teams, um, you know, get in and do well. I feel it's probably a better... A better chance of an upset if it's a team with maybe a little bit of a, a pedigree in this tournament, say like Guadalupe versus a team that's getting there for the first time and and um, maybe just happy to be there. Um, but yeah, it's possible. I, I do think this is a group that the playoff team could surprise. I think there's a, there's opportunity for it here. Uh, do you think that would be strong enough to surprise uh, Guatemala or just Cuba? I probably think just Cuba, and not that I see Guatemala as so much stronger than Cuba, but I see Cuba as a more inconsistent team and more likely to drop points. Right. Okay, and among the four teams, I'll mention them again. It's uh, Guadeloupe, uh, Grenada, Guiana, is it Guiana, mm -hmm. and uh, Antigua, and Barbuda. Uh, do you have any favorites among those? It's really hard to say. I mean, all of those teams have had sporadic appearances in the Gold Cup recently. Not Antigua, I suppose, but the other ones, they've all been there in the last couple of years. Not performed particularly well, but I don't know. I I don't know. I think it's, it's very tough to predict who's going to do it. Yeah, I'm very excited about this uh, playoff set because, you know, uh, uh, you you kind of hinted that Guadeloupe is, is the strongest team in terms of... Uh, 
uh, history in the cup, and I agree. And yet they were twice beaten by Antigua and Barbuda, who have never appeared in the cup. So that uh, is interesting. Yeah, it's it's wide open. Um, I'm not sure if there's enough to say that Guyana or Granada, who have been in the cup recently, they're really kind of on an upward trajectory. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's interesting. All have a bit of momentum to build off. All are still not entirely used to being at this level, and are you know helped by the expanded tournament. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's pretty open in my books. They do. I agree with you. None of them, none of them seem to be, uh, you know, have much momentum forward. But they do all have an argument uh, for at least winning the playoff. Uh, Granada uh, reached the cup most recently in 2021 and have three appearances, but they are the lowest ranked. Uh, while Guyana is the highest ranked, but they've reached the cup only once before. So you could make an argument for any one of them. Yeah. All right, that's cool, and I guess that brings us to the uh, end of the pod uh, of the uh, media cast. So good talking with you about this, Connor. Yeah. We'll oh see no, it. wait! There's one more thing to do. <laughs> I have to pin you down on your final prediction. Of course. Um, well, I kind of hinted at it already. Canada first, Guatemala second, Cuba third. Playoff winner fourth. I know that's kind of the conventional thing, but um, it's probably the most likely, but uh, by no means certain. Right. I'm going to be a bit bolder and uh, go with the same order, Canada, uh, Guatemala, Cuba, but I'm going to say uh, Guadeloupe. I'm going to go out on a limb and say uh, Guadeloupe will be in there, but they'll finish fourth. All right. Okay. Well, we will. uh, Well, this is it. This is the final. Uh, group podcast so we'll see you in our next series all right all right please check the show notes for a link to a short video about our past present and future media casts and uh, all other links to navigate you through our system including a link to our youtube channel where each series is separated into its own playlist